dear students uh, this is our 15th lecture on bioorganic chemistry and uh, today we will start with the new chapter that is enzyme catalyzed reactions and in this first re, uh, lecture we will discuss uh, basic concepts on enzyme catalyzed reactions now uh, as you know that uh, enzymes they are natural proteins uh, which catalyze uh, chemical and biochemical reactions and uh, first enzyme which was reported was uh, jack pin urease uh, which hydrolyzed uh, urea to a smaller uh, compound like carbon dioxide and ammonia and uh, since then uh, we have seen uh, numerous uh, examples of uh, enzyme catalyzed transformations uh, from uh, smaller molecule to very larger molecular weight molecules. And uh, there are two characteristics uh, which are there in enzyme catalyzed reactions. One is their uh, specificity that enzymes they are very specific in their action and uh, second is rate acceleration that uh, rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction is uh, many many times uh, higher as compared to the chemically catalyzed reactions and uh, for both these characteristics specificity as well as for rate acceleration the main uh, responsible factor is the active sites which are present on these uh, molecules that is enzymes and these uh, active sites they contain amino acid residues uh, and in some enzymes uh, we are having cofactors which are responsible for the activity of that enzyme. So in general uh, enzymes uh, they function by raising the ground state energy uh, of uh, any reaction and uh, secondly by lowering the transition state energy and the energetic intermediates which lead to uh, the main factors of uh, specificity and rate acceleration in these types of uh, enzymatic reactions. Uh, the most common example of uh, enzyme catalyzed reactions is phosphorylation. So phosphorylation as you know uh, this involves both catabolic as well as uh, anabolic activities uh, which uh, are used uh, for providing energy through formation of uh, ATP and uh, ATP which is uh, called as cells energy currency. So uh, main function of uh, uh, phosphate group in biosynthesis is uh, to provide this uh, storehouses of energy in the form of ATP is for biosynthetic reactions and uh, uh, these reactions uh, which are called as phosphorylation reactions they generally take place by nucleophilic displacement at the electrophilic phosphoric uh, atom and uh, different types of enzymes they catalyze uh, different types of nucleophilic displacement reactions at the phosphorus atom. So, uh, first uh, general type of reaction is uh, formation of ATP from ADP, adenosine diphosphate from uh, adeno di uh, diphosphate uh, and ATP is ad adenosine triphosphate. So, basically uh, if we see uh, that adenosine diphosphate which is having this structure. Uh, there are two phosphate groups present that is why this is called as diphosphate. So when uh, this adenosine diphosphate reacts with uh, phosphoenol pyruvate in presence of uh, enzyme then uh, one of the phosphate group from phosphoenol pyruvate is transferred from this molecule to ADP and this is converted into ATP and uh, in addition uh, we get a molecule of pyruvate 
and the energy of this compound is high because enolic form is unstable tautomeric form this enolic form is uh, unstable tautomeric form of more stable ketonic uh, form of the pyruvate so the kinetics uh, of this reaction is that uh, this reaction is highly exothermic uh, delta g0 for this reaction is minus 61.9 kilojoules per mole and uh, this uh, reaction can be coupled with the formation of atp from adp now basically uh, this is a two step reaction that how adp is converted into atp uh, in the first step uh, the uh, phosphoenol pyruvate this undergoes hydrolysis in presence of water as a nucleophile so uh, when this will undergo uh, hydrolysis uh, we will uh, get a uh, molecule of pyruvate and a phosphate will be formed and this reaction is highly exothermic uh, a, this much amount of energy is released during the reaction because this is an exothermic reaction minus 61.9 kilojoules of energy and this energy is used up in the second step where this phosphate group formed in the first step is reacting with a molecule of adenosine diphosphate where uh, nucleophilic displacement at the phosphate group will take place and this will be converted into atp although this uh, step is an ex uh, is uh, endothermic step that is uh, this requires this amount of energy to be supplied to the system for this reaction to take place plus 30.5 kilojoules per mole of energy is required for this reaction to take place and this comes from the amount of energy which has been produced in the first step of the reaction so overall phosphoenol pyruvate reacts with adp a molecule of adp to give us a molecule of atp and a molecule of pyruvate and this minus this and overall we can see that overall two step reaction is an exothermic process so because energy is released during the overall reaction that means formation of atp can take place from adp in this uh, manner so these uh, kinetics they tell us that uh, this reaction is a forward reaction similarly uh, adp can also be formed from atp but the methodology for formation of adp from atp is different as you have seen uh, that free energy of hydrolysis of atp to adp is exothermic reaction minus 30.5 kilojoules per mole of energy is released if atp is hydrolyzed to adp uh, how this takes place uh, this is again a two step process that in the first step glucose a molecule of glucose will react with a molecule of phosphate and uh, we will get glucose 6 phosphate so formation of glucose 6 phosphate takes place via conversion of atp into adp and uh, reaction of glucose with hydrogen phosphate is an endothermic process that 13.8 kilojoules per mole of energy is required for this reaction to take place and the kinetics of this reaction that is uh, the energy released in the first step that will be used up that is uh, uh, hydrolysis of atp to adp will produce minus 30.5% uh, uh, minus 30.5 kilojoules uh, per mole of energy which will be used up in the second step which is an endothermic step and mechanism of this uh, this reaction is that glucose reacts uh, in the first step with the atp so one molecule of phosphate is transferred from atp to this glucose in a one step bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction 
So, this uh, oxygen having two lone pair of electrons will act as a nucleophile and this, this will attack this electrophilic phosphate for the hydrolysis of this phosphorus oxygen bond. And this is how one phosphate molecule, uh, molecule uh, one phosphate will be transferred to this glucose, this will become glucose 6 phosphate and ATP will be converted into ADP. And this mechanism is known as inline displacement mechanism. Then you can see uh, how the kinetics of this reaction behaves. Uh, in the first step as you know the hydrolysis of ATP, ATP undergo hydrolysis to give us ADP and one molecule of hydrogen phosphate and this is an exothermic reaction releasing minus 30.5 kilo joules per mole of energy into the system and then one molecule of glucose will interact with uh, hydrogen phosphate uh, undergo phosphorylation to give us glucose 6 phosphate this is an endothermic process uh, requiring uh, plus 13.8 kilo joules per mole of energy so overall the reaction is an exothermic process where atp is hydrolyzed to adp so this is how adp can be formed from atp through this process so such type of reactions where uh, energy is uh, released during one step and is used during the other step that is one step is exothermic other step is endothermic such reactions they are called as coupled reactions so formation of adp from atp is an example of coupled reaction then similarly uh, nucleophilic displacement at ATP can take place at uh, different uh, phosphorus atoms this is say alpha, beta or gamma phosphate. So depending upon where the nucleophile attacks either at this that means hydrolysis will take place at this place then we will put, uh, get a diphosphate ADP plus a molecule of hydrogen phosphate. If attack takes place here then we will get adenosine monophosphate as the product and dipho cyclic diphosphate will be formed. But generally ATP undergoes uh, hydrolysis very slowly because of the negative charge present on the oxygens and because of the negative charge uh, present on the oxygens of the phosphate groups uh, this uh, becomes very unreactive towards the nucleophile but however in case of uh, enzymatic uh, hydrolysis of ATP the active sites of the enzymes they get uh, bound uh, to the uh, this negatively charged oxygen uh, and uh, uh, these oxygen they also undergo complexation with the uh, two negatively charged present on the magnesium uh, 2 plus ions. For example, you can see over here these two oxygens they are having negative charge and they will get bound to the magnesium 2 plus ion uh, metal ion which is present as a cofactor. So, uh, that means uh, these uh, negative charges present on these oxygen will be neutralized by this magnesium 2 plus ion. Similarly, uh, on the enzyme if we are having say arginine as the active site, then the shift base uh, present on this, this will also neutralize the negative charge on this oxygen. So, uh, by neutralizing the negative charge on this uh, these oxygens this ATP uh, hydrolysis of this ATP will become faster. So similarly this lysine will neutralize the negative charge present on this oxygen uh, with having a uh, hydrogen bond with this. So as you can see the negative charge of all the oxygens that has been neutralized by 
different active sites or metal ions so now these phosphor uh, phosphorus atoms uh, they have been neutralized and they can be attacked by a nucleophile very easily and atp can undergo hydrolysis very fast so this is how this undergoes hydrolysis to produce either atp can be hydrolyzed either to adp or to amp so, uh, this type of uh, adenosine uh, monophosphate can also be formed with the release of uh, this type of uh, magnesium diphosphate Uh, then as I have told you that multiple nucleophilic displacements at ATP can take place uh, to give us different types of products depending upon the uh, type of uh, phosphorus atom which is attacked by the nucleophile either gamma phosphorus or beta phosphorus or alpha phosphorus. So if nucleophile attacks this uh, gamma phosphorus then we will get a nuclear uh, nucleophilic phosphate plus a molecule of ADP will be formed so this phosphorus oxygen bond will break and we will get ADP plus this if beta phosphorus atom is attacked by the nucleophile then hydrolysis will take place between this phosphorus oxygen bond and we will get a monophosphate plus this nucleophilic diphosphate and if this alpha phosphorus is attacked then we will get a molecule of adenosine and uh, this triphosphate will be formed so depending upon the type of phosphorus atom attacked by the nucleophile we will get different types of uh, products in uh, multiple nucleophilic displacement reactions thank you very much